uh, a few of those, some of the most interesting ones that have been published uh, in recent time. Uh, one, I start with natural zeolites. Uh, see, these are sodium and calcium aluminum silicates. They are a little bit like bentonite, so they're negatively charged at 1 pH. Um, advantage here is that uh, they don't have this shrink and swell behavior. When you hydrate bentonite in water, it is swell. And this is where the wine is trapped later when you uh, when you end up with the lees with the bentonite uh, wine and protein trapped together. So in this experiment done by uh, Australian Wine Research Institute researcher in published in 2019, um, they treated three wines with high protein content, high instability level, with industry standards, so two types of bentonite or natural zeolites, and the wine could be uh, stabilized. However, you can see here from the numbers. Um, while the wine can be fully stabilized, um, there's a removal of potassium. Another advantage is that you don't have lees or very little amount of lees, so very little amount of wine trapped. They need to be treated later on. The negative side is that it requires high dosages. Uh, the OEV needs to be needs to approve that uh, if this could become a commercial solution. And the cost uh, is not uh, known yet, but uh, at the moment, as every solution that you develop, the cost tends to be quite high at the beginning of the process. So promising, but not there yet. Another one is a uh, mesoporous material, zirconia. Um, this is work that has been done uh, about a decade ago now, but has uh, shown the ability to, when you add the zirconia, which looks like this, this picture down here, I hope you see my arrow when I indicate, um, is a material that you add it to the wine, is a mesoporous, so it has small porosity, so the, the protein will enter into these pores and then they will be trapped. So basically, the protein will stick to the zirconia and then uh, you will uh, remove the zirconia, which is insoluble without having lees, uh, and that would be quite advantageous. Here you can see that from adding zirconia at day three of a fermentation, you can see how the protein content, this is what in the y-axis is, is decreased quite dramatically in a couple of days as opposed to the control. So the pros here is that uh, if used during fermentation, it increased fermentation rate, it can be reused by washing with sodium hydroxide, it can lead to stab stable wine produced without any lees and without sensory or compositional changes. Uh, the negative side, a bit like the zeolites before, is that you need a lot of zirconia uh, so, uh, to, uh, to reach this target. It removes some metals from the wine. This can be a, this a disadvantage, but it can also be an advantage in some case. And it only works with stirring. So if you use the fermentation, good. But if you use it in the wine, then you need to mix the wine when this is happening. And so this is an uh, unpractical solution. Another uh, finding agent, this type is a cell wall polysaccharide that you start from red seaweeds, widely used in many, many industries, it's carrageenan. Uh, this is also negatively charged at low pH, so it's also by opposite charge binding the proteins in the wine. Uh, this is a solution that came from the beer industry, where in which carrageenan is being used for protein stabilization. Uh, and uh, when applied to several wines, in this case we have wine eight wines treated, you can see in green the protein content before treatment and in blue after treatment, you can see that uh, finding with uh, carrageenan uh, led to a, basically a 90-95% decrease in protein content and, uh, so that the wine without protein would be uh, stabilized. This is then shown to be very effective uh, with low sensory and chemical impacts. Uh, the problems with carrageenan is that you really need to find the right amount. Otherwise, if you overfine the carrageenan, this will stay in the wine and it will cause issue with filterability. So a testing here to predict whether the amount of carrageenan is required for this to become commercially viable. A very interesting one, again, quite recent, um, is uh, relying on coated magnetic nanoparticles. So these nanopart nanoparticles coated with uh, a function that bind wine proteins will, uh, upon adding this to the wine, will basically bind the protein and then by re you remove the nanoparticles by with a magnet, so it's very easy to, uh, to remove them. So the pros of this is that it's effective, uh, it's a quick uh, interaction with proteins, so quick removal, minimal lease production, almost none, potentially reusable if you manage to wash the nanoparticles and to detach the protein from it, uh, which has been shown to have a minimal uh, impact on wine composition. 
The negative side is that we're talking about nanoparticles, so difficult to predict how you can remove them all from the wine, so residue is, is always a concern. Um, and OIV, if this is the way that this is going, we'll need to uh, consider that and approve it. The costs, of course, has not been, uh, we are still at the research level, and so the cost hasn't been uh, fully evaluated. And also in this case, to stabilize a wine, you need a lot of it or high application rates. Uh, so it's a solution that still needs to be uh, improved and looked at. Another solution that has been published, this was 2020 and 2021 paper, is uh, quite interesting because it, it looked at removing uh, proteins by using um, grape seed powder. So grape seeds are rich in phenolics. Phenolics are, by definition, uh, protein binding agents, so phenolics and protein will interact. So in this experiment, they made a powder, they roasted it, uh, and then they added to grape juice to remove proteins. Uh, some proteins were removed, not all of it, so the wine was partially stabilized. The advantage is that you valorize a waste product uh, with, by, in a circular uh, way, which is quite um, uh, a nice idea. The downside of this is that you need a lot, 20 gram per liter, and the sensory effect hasn't been shown yet, so there might be a sensory effect by using so much of grapeseed to stabilize a wine in, at the juice stage. 